broadly. I define addiction as any behavior that is associated with uh, craving, with temporary relief, and with long-term negative consequences, along with an impairment of control over it, so that the person wishes to give it, give it up or promises to do so, but can't follow through. And when you understand that, then you can see that there are many more addictions than simply those related to drugs. There's workaholism, shopping to the internet, to video games. There's the addiction to power. People that have power, but they want more and more and more. Nothing is ever enough for them. Uh, acquisition. Corporations that must more and more and more. The addiction to oil. That leads to the wealth and the products made accessible to us by oil. Look at the negative consequences on the environment. Uh, now we're, we're destroying the very earth that we uh, inhabit for the sake of that addiction. But these addictions are far more devastating in their social consequences than the cocaine or heroin habits of my doctor and his patients. Yet they're rewarded and considered to be respectable. The tobacco company executive that shows a higher profit will get a much bigger reward. He doesn't face any negative consequences legally or otherwise. In fact, he's a respected member of the board of several other corporations. But tobacco smoke and related diseases kill five and a half million people around the world every year. Uh, in the United States, they kill 400,000 people a year. And these people are addicted to what? To profit. To such a degree are they addicted that they're actually in denial about the impact of their uh, activities, which is typical for addicts, is denial. And that's irrespectable. It's respectable to be addicted to profit no matter what the cost. So what is acceptable and what is respectable is a highly arbitrary phenomenon in our society. And it seems like the greater the harm, the more respectable the addiction.